morning. Hi, Fran. I am just going to go back into my last post and put that I am live so everybody knows. And give me one second. I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late. Today was um, meet the teacher day. I back to school. <laughs> And I was not prepared for it to go as long as it did. So give me one sec. I just want to make sure I can see what you guys are saying. All right. So good morning, Cindy, Jennifer, Glenda, Deborah, Miriam. Thanks for joining. Hi, Patricia, Julie. Thank you for sharing. And Mary and Adrian. Hey, Janice. Thanks for sharing, Mary. Good morning. It's so quiet there. Yeah, because nobody's here. <laughs> No one's here but me. It's very quiet. So good morning, everybody. Again, I do apologize for being late. I do have a really fun project to share with you today. I want to show you a couple things I've been working on. And look, now you can see the inside of the catalog, which I'm sure you've all seen by now. But how fun is this? All the cool stuff in here. All the great things going on. In case you missed it, there's some more Stampin' Blends. Christmas colors. Thank you all for the shares. And what's another cool thing? This paper is awesome. It's got flocking on it. It's flocking awesome. <laughs> you know, there's no children here, so I can say those things. Um, really cool paper, if you haven't seen it. All the white has a little bit of a fuzz to it. It's so cute. It's like those little books you had when you were little. And where was the other? This is neat. Also, the... Um, Memories and More card kit. Lots of people have been using this to make cards. They also have this other cool thing that I just want to share with you guys as well. Oh, thanks, Kelly. I know I'm not alone. It's always good when you guys are here, at least. I'm never alone. Yes, today the catalog is live. It's online. You can order from it. Um, what I wanted to show you guys was there are a few of these in here where it says you can make it. So they have these kind of mini bundles. So if you might not have noticed this, this is a great way to get a bunch of stuff if maybe you're on a budget or you, you can't pick what you want. But if you look on this, I'll show you one other one here. You get everything that's listed here for $43.50. You get one of each. So you would get the Memories and More card pack. You would get these envelopes, the red envelopes and the red note cards. You get the Santa bags. You get the shapes, which I believe are on the other page. Yes, the enamel shapes. You also get green baker's twine and dimensionals. So you get everything in this little bundle here for $43.50. So it's pretty cool. And they have another one. This one I thought was really neat. If you have someone who maybe you want to buy something for, but you don't really know what to get them, or someone who maybe is a new crafter, this is another really good way to kind of get them involved. Um, so excited. I know to see it live. So much fun. So this is another one here. And this set is pretty cool because you could use this for um, Christmas. You could use it for Thanksgiving. You could just change out the greetings. But the same thing. So you get everything that's listed here for $57.75. Now all this is U.S. price. So I am a U.S. demonstrator. I can only sell um, U.S. wise. A savings. You know, I'm not really 100% sure, Karen. I haven't looked at it that closely, but I thought it would be a cool idea if you have someone that's, or if you are a demonstrator and say you have some people that are coming to one of your card classes and they can't decide what to get, this is a great suggestion because with this you get the stamp set, you get a block, you get a package of Thick Whisper White cardstock, you get Granny Apple Green and Tranquil Tide pads, plus dimensionals and the gold thread. So that's a really great deal for someone who's just getting into crafting. So there are a couple of those throughout. And then the other thing, oops, I just peeled off my sticky. The other thing I wanted to show you too, and this I have been using a ton. So I think, in case you might have missed it, um, I know I've talked about it a lot, but the Take Your Pick tool, any of you ladies, myself not included, who have acrylic fingernails or just have a hard time getting things up, you guys are going to love this end of the tool because it helps to take the release paper off of tear and tape or if you use like the um, Be Creative tape or the Sook Wang tape or the red tape, whatever the case may be, it really lifts it up easier. And I'm going to just show you when I adhere something just for the heck of it. But this is awesome and then you have you also have the piercing tip this was I think originally intended to maybe get like um let's see if I can grab one 
like to get these little jewels. So you could use this to lift these up and then place them, but it works amazing to get release paper off. So another good idea. And then the other cool part is you can also have this as your paper piercer. So if you were die cutting something, you could always just switch out the tip. So the pen comes with the, the tacky tip, which you can buy replacements for this. And then it has the thick end and the skinny end of the, um, oh my gosh, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh Lord, what are these things called? See, that's what happens when I try to do too many things at once. All right, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the, the other word here. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, heavens. Stylus. Good Lord. That was hard today. So it has the small tip, the big tip. And don't you love how it autocorrects the stylish? That's right, Cindy. We're stylish too, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. And then it has the spatula and it has the, um, the point. So this is a really great tool. And I am running a promotion, and it did go out to my newsletter subscribers. So if you um, purchase a $50 purchase through me, Rach the Stamper, you do always get a free, beautiful, full-color PDF inspiration sheet. But if you place a $100 order, you're going to get a Simply Chamois, and you'll get two inspiration sheets. If you place a $150 order, I'm going to give you a free Take Your Pick tool and three inspiration sheets. But those are only valid through me, Rach the Stamper. So you have to go to Rach the Stamper, that stampin' up that net, place your order, and you have to use the September hostess code, except if your order is 150, because I can keep track of those easily. So if you have that, check that out. It is all listed on my blog on the monthly special, so just keep that in mind if that's something. You can buy the refills for the putty. They're 350, and I didn't get one yet. But basically this just screws out and then you put a whole nother one in. And what you do is you screw the putty, oops, you screw the putty up and it stays tacky. So you don't really need that much. It kind of comes out a little bit ahead of time more than what you need. So I, that's why I have mine in the ball. But you can use this to pick up things, obviously not big post-its, but you could use this to pick up um, sequins or anything else. I had another tool that I use I got from Amazon. It's called a jewel picker. I do like that one as well. But this one kind of is nice because everything's all in one. So, and then you have these little changeable tips. So, cool, cool ideas there. Going out and coming back in and comments in regards to bundles. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Could be the way the stream is today. I don't know. But don't worry. Anything you missed, if you missed something in the beginning, you know, you can always go back and watch the replay. It is available for replay. So what we're going to be doing today, surprisingly enough, here's one reason I need to make another order is because we could not pre-order these host sets. Hey, Tammy, thanks for joining. So I really want to get this because I thought this was so wonderful. You could use these for treat bags. Cheers to the new year. How cute is that card? I love the thanks. That'll be a great um, Thanksgiving card. And also the little stocking set. How adorable is that? And the stockings were hung. How cute. So I definitely want both of these host sets. These you can um, earn if you have a qualifying order for a hostess or if you have a big enough order and you're just ordering yourself. You can order these. You have to get them with your stamp and reward. So just remember that if you are ordering something and you want to get one of these sets, you can't put it in the buying section. You have to put it in the stamp and rewards section. So you use your stamping rewards for it. So just keep that in mind, but that's why I'll be placing my other order because I want both of these. And let's see, what else do we have today? So this is super fun. This is all live. Um, I know later today, Tammy and uh, Linda are doing a stamp and scoop and they're probably going to show you a million different things with ideas and everything. So make sure you tune into them. That's craftystampin.com or stampwithtammy.com. And also, if you don't have a demonstrator, I'd be happy to send you a catalog for free. All you have to do is send me your full mailing address, including your zip code, and I will send you one, no problem. Also, if you don't have the annual catalog, the big catalog, I'd be happy to send you that as well. But this is so, there's so many ideas on this. You guys are gonna love, love this. So I wanna show you what I was working on, and this will be for later this week. I was making a couple little projects, and I have a tip for you. Before we get started, I have one quick tip to add to this. So I had originally made this absolutely adorable box. Let me see if I can find it here. 
I had made this box. It was so darn cute. And I'm going to reassemble it if I can get it to kind of just go back together. It was so adorable. I had a belly band for it. This was with when we had that little ice cream set. Oh my gosh, I loved it. And I thought, I need to make this again. But I could not, for the life of me, remember how the heck I made it. So, I have a tip. So it took me a lot of trial and error. I did many different devices before I finally remembered how I did it. So I made this one. This is going to be a new one for fall. I haven't finished decorating it yet. But I have a suggestion. So I know, and look, you can put like some Ghirardelli's in here. We can make these so they're longer so they can fit like a gift card. I also have a couple different shapes. There's some boxes. Here's a bigger, taller box. Lots of different ideas. But my suggestion is this. So I always make templates when I create something in different sizes to see, you know, like what size I like. But my other new suggestion will be, aside from this, is when you make your template, okay? So like this one, I started out with a six by six piece of paper and I put where I scored it, but there you go, Stephanie. Put what you made it with on here. So I need to write on here somewhere, envelope, punch board. Or if I made it with the um, Simply Scored, I could just write SS for the Simply Scored. I can't tell you. I don't know why it took me so long to remember. That's how I made these. So I made a whole bunch of different ones. Just in, I have a lot of scrap colors left over and a lot of really crazy colors I bought a long time ago. So I usually make them as my sample. But I have been putting on there the size of the paper I started with. This will tell you that it's a three inch square box. So if you fold this up, and it gets all closed together. The box is three inches square, so I've been putting that too, just so I know what will fit in there. And then where I score it on that awesome envelope punch board. You can make lots of things besides envelopes with this. So if you don't have this, make sure you um, keep your eye out. It's 20 bucks, you can't beat that. You can make all kinds of cool stuff. You can make custom envelopes. You can make envelopes out of um, like heavier watercolor paper, stamp them, really cool. But anyway, yes, this is made from the Winter Woods stamp set. That's where I did this, this little wood thing with. And then I did this with Mossy Meadow. So this is just a belly band, slides right over it. I didn't finish decorating it yet, but this is a project I was working on the other day. And I had started out because I was trying to case one of the cards in the catalog that's in there with that farm set. And then I also did a little bit of um, clear heat embossing with the trees. And then I was going to do um, some kind of background color. But I just didn't end up finished working on that yet. So, just a tip for you. When you have that, make sure you write your template. Write what your sizes are. But also write what you use to make it. Because I think that would be really helpful. And I, I learn as I go. So, I'm sharing these tips with you as I'm remembering that, wow, I should probably tell somebody how, you know, how easy it is to remember to do that. Because I could have made this like five months ago, but I couldn't remember what I did with it. So, I did not make the boxes yet, Adrian. These are projects I, I am working on for um, future videos. So, you didn't miss anything, but I have a couple different sizes of stuff. So, you can fit lots, you can fit lots of stuff in this one. And the other neat thing is you could make this... This I just decorated with DSP. You could make it so it has a little belly band or some ribbon to close it. Or you can even tuck it in. So it's just like a little envelope box. Looks like a little tea box. So this one also has a belly band to keep it closed. But I will be sharing those in the future. In the very near future. But what we're going to make today is actually a card idea that um, Donna, one of the viewers, shared with me. And I am... Um, completely open to taking suggestions for cards. If you guys ever have a card that you want made or an idea that you'd like to see demonstrated, all you have to do is let me know. I am happy to try it out. I will tell you one thing, this card, the instructions that I got for this card, um, first of all, I'm filming from a different thing today, so bear with me because my other thing was dead. When I have the instructions for these cards. I'm just going to kind of wing it. It says that it'll work different if you have photo paper versus glossy paper. So I have both. So what we're going to do is we're going to try it. We're going to see what it looks like and we're going to go from there. And as we modify along, we'll see if one works better than the other. This is just a sheet of photo paper I have for my printer. If anyone has a photo printer, sometimes they will give you these sheets or you can actually get them at the dollar store and you could just cut it down. So I am going to go ahead and trim this down so it would be a background piece. So I'm going to make it uh, five and a quarter. 
and I think it should be yeah, by four. So this is this is actual photo paper. So it's HP photo paper. And if your comments cover it, all you have to do is swipe to the right, Beverly, and it'll hide them so you can see the whole picture. So give that a shot. And then I'm also going to get out some glossy paper. So this is in our, our catalog because they said that they come, they turn out differently. So as you can see, the photo paper is a little bit more of a crisp white where our glossy paper has a little bit of a tint to it. So we'll see which one we like better. I'm sure we'll probably like both of them. And yes, that is that Donna, Karen. She's the one that sent me that idea. <laughs> so what we're going to use today is a flat or a flattened coffee filter. And we're going to make both of our cards out of one coffee filter because it says you can use more than one. And just bear with me one second. I want to turn the fan down. It says you can make more than one print from this because it's kind of like making a photo print. So we're going to just use the same one for both and then we'll see which one we like better. But um, I've not done this technique before. This is the first time I'm doing it. So again, we'll do this together and see how it turns out. We are going to use our brush -o colors for this and we're going to use a Stampin' Spritzer full of water. You could also use a spray bottle if that's all you have handy. That's fine. Let me move a couple of these things out of the way. And we will get started. Scoot this over a little bit so I don't... I was doing some crazy stuff the other day, dragging things, but wasn't working out for me. So I abandoned it and decided to start something else instead. And if anybody has been here longer than two minutes, you know how I roll. I kind of do a lot of different things at the same time. And once again, once I start doing this technique, I will um, try to keep up with the comments. But if for any reason I miss something, I do go back and read them at the end. Okay? So we have our brush show. And this mat is a mat I got from, um, I don't know if I got it from Simon Says Stamp or Amazon. But basically, it's a wipe clean mat, so you can wipe it off. However, sometimes when you work with some colors, it will stain it. It does not affect the mat. But if that's something that bothers you, you might want to put paper towels or something else down. Um, another thing they said to use for this, which I don't believe I grabbed, are paper towels. Because what you're going to do is you're going to want to blot the color off. So I'm going to just use my um, microfiber. But you could use paper towels, which will basically absorb a little bit of the water. Now, when the person did it, they had a roll of towels. And they kind of just left them rolled up and just used them for that and then used them for other projects. So you can do that as you see fit. If you don't want to waste paper towels, you could kind of fold a couple of them in half and put it down instead. All right, let me... One more thing. I just want to turn this fan off so it doesn't dry anything prematurely. So what we're going to do is we're going to wet this just a little bit. Again, this is just a coffee filter. So we're going to wet it a little bit first. And then we're going to just decide on colors. Yeah, I have a lot of ideas for videos. So we're, we're, we're going to try and get some stuff together. So I'm going to go with, oh, this has embossing powder on it. That must have spilled out of there. I'm going to go with blue. And maybe green. And you could do this whatever you want. You could do it in all different colors if you wanted to. You could have a lot of colors mixed together. So what I'm going to do is I do shake my brush o before I take the pin out just to mix the colors a little bit. And I'm going to just tap some of this on. And again, hopefully this will work well because I haven't done it before, but we'll see. And I'm going to tap a little bit of blue. All right, and now I'm going to get my spritzer again, and I'm going to spray, which is just going to activate all these colors. So you do want this to be pretty wet. Let's see. A little bit more blue. And a little bit more green. All right, I'm going to spray it one more time. So, oops. See, I should have moved my photo paper over just a little bit. <coughs> so that's pretty, pretty wet. You can see some of the colors are mixing there. Okay, so here's a moment of truth. I do have my uh, rag ready in case I make a mess. I'm going to put my covers on my brush o just in case they accidentally decide to jump 
into this pile. So I'm gonna do the photo paper first. So just in case you can't see, the photo paper is super, super white, okay? So I'll wipe this off with my microfiber cloth. So this is really, really white. And then the other one is the glossy card stock. They did say it will be different, but I don't know how. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up and you're gonna have really messy fingers. So just remember that. I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna lay this down on here and put this down. I'm guessing when you do it, you kind of want to put it down flat. Okay, so now will be the part where you're going to just press just a little bit. Let's press this a little bit more. And I'm going to just take this and just dab. So it's kind of like a print, a printing. That you're taking I'm gonna set this over here oops just so it kind of dries I'm gonna lay this is the glossy cardstock let me move this over just a smidge more and I'm gonna put this one face down this time to see if it does anything differently once again we're gonna press so this is definitely like brush o direct versus this was kind of from the other side let me wipe a little bit of this up we'll see what this looks like and now you're definitely I'll tell you one thing ahead of time because you know as I do these I try to do them so you guys can see how it works the first time and then kind of learn from there. So we definitely would have to hit this with our, let's try, let me flip this over a little bit. Hit this with our um, heat tool. All right, and I'm gonna absorb this a little bit with the towel. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm gonna fold this up. I'm gonna put this in the trash. And I want to just wipe this up just quickly because in case, just with the edges of this, I want to um, hit this with the heat tool. And again, I'm going to just tap off the edges of this onto my towel. Just wipe all this up. So I just tend to use, like, you can either use old tea towels or you can definitely tell one thing right here. The glossy paper definitely crinkles significantly more versus the photo paper. That's one thing I noticed straight off. But I usually use either old tea towels or like these. You can get these at the um, auto store. They're the like lint-free cloths that you're supposed to wash your car with, I guess. I just have a huge pack, so I usually just absorb these. I'm going to sit this here just to pick up. Okay. And I'm going to grab my heat tool. Oh, how it got all the way over there. And I'm going to just heat these up just a little bit, okay? So you will see there definitely are some spots that didn't get any color, which is fine. And I'm also going to flip this to the back so we can see. Definitely seeps through more on the glossy cardstock versus the photo paper. The photo paper kind of holds it a little better. Let me just tap this off on this side. The photo paper, it doesn't seep through quite as much. So you can definitely see advantages to one versus the other. And obviously when you do this, you definitely want to keep it moving around. But the other thing, quite honestly, if you have the time and you're not making a live video, and I will do these later because what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to post this later once it completely dries. If you let them set to dry, and this goes for kind of anything, you see dirty fingers. So if you're really worried about your fingers, make sure you wear gloves. If you let this set to dry, just like if you had watercolor paper and you were drawing it, it looks so different if you let it sit versus drying it, if that makes sense, okay? So I'm gonna do one more. And what we're gonna do with this one is I'm gonna apply it flipped over again and yes, these are brush -o, so we are using brush -o. I'm gonna do one with purple, so I'm gonna mix red and blue and make just a purple background. I'm gonna grab one more piece of photo paper, since that did seem to work a little bit better. And so I have my two pieces over here, I'm gonna let these dry, but you could use these for backgrounds. I really like this one. I definitely will tell you, from looking at it physically in front of me, this is almost dry. 
the photo paper, this isn't. So the glossy cardstock definitely does not work as well. Absolutely, I agree with you, Marilyn. This is dry. It still has its shiny technique. And this one's definitely much more crinkled. So photo paper for the win, absolutely. So you can, again, you can get it at the dollar store. They have it in the Kodak. Um, it's in like the craft section, but it's in a big sheet and you get like five sheets so you can cut them down. So this is again, a little bit bigger. So you can always make this bigger. And then if you wanted to, you could trim it down. So this is a bigger sheet. So I'm going to move this over and we're going to do one more. So again, I have a lot of coffee filters. Usually these are kind of left over from when I've made, um, I've used these also for my embossing powder. So when they get really flat, then you could just use them for this. That way you're re 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 recycling. So I'm going to shake the red up and, oh, that's okay, Donna. You can always go back and watch. It'll be on the replay. All right. So once again, I'm going to spray this with some water and I'm going to make this one a little bit wetter first. So I'm just using a Stampin' Spritzer, but if you have like a, a water bottle will work. Straighten that out. Tell you one thing, I should have emptied this water because it does not smell so fantastic. Good thing we don't have smell of vision here. And then I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle. So I'm going to do a little bit of red. A little bit of blue. You can see it's like soaking it up. A little more red over here. And then I'm going to re-wet it again just to kind of mix the colors together. Oh, wouldn't you know. I'm telling you, I am winning today. Okay, so we have our sheet here. You can kind of just touch it a little bit. We'll make almost make the colors mix. And let's just... You can even mix them with your finger if you want to. Lots of different stuff you can do. Just depends on how dirty you want to get, I guess. This looks like the 4th of July. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to lift this up. This one isn't as sopping wet as the other one was. And I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this one face down. All right, and press. And again, you could do it with paper towels if you want to try to keep your hands a little bit neater. You definitely have more blended effect with more water. It looks, you know, this looks like a galaxy. That's really cool. I like this one a lot. Very, very neat. If you have like a little leftover strip, this was just a strip that I had from that other piece that I cut off. So I'm just going to put this on here up a little bit more at the blended end and lay it on top. You can, so you could cut this into strips if you wanted to. Oh, look how cool that one looks. And they're going to look different every time. This definitely looks like a galaxy. I really like that one. So they're going to look different every time. You can, you don't have to ball these up after you're using them just once, but I just am afraid I'm going to make a huge mess or drop it on the floor. Definitely don't want to drop it on the floor. And remember, the other thing too is if you put your brush -o on here dry and then spritz it, it will also give you a different effect. So it really just depends on what you want to go for it. So I'm going to just tap this just a little bit. This is a great, oh, that would be an awesome card. I might have to use that for the background of my son's uh, Star Wars birthday card because this would be super cool. It does look like a, like a nebula or something like that. Really neat. Star Wars. Yeah, we love Star Wars in our house. We have completely uh, gotten onto the Star Wars ship this year. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and don't drop it on your clothes. Right. Well, luckily my desk is very large. And as you can see from the white cloth, it is really dark. So pretty much no matter what I get on this. Actually, uh, it's, my grandfather made me this desk. It's made out of old church benches, believe it or not. So it's pretty durable. And I'm going to just tap the other side of this just to clean that off. So if you don't have it, go get yourself some photo paper. And again, you can dab this off with a cloth. You could dab it off with your uh, paper towel roll. That's what the lady did on the instructional. This was from... Um, Split Coast Stampers. This is the idea that Donna shared. So it's really, really neat. And this one here, I really like that piece. It's super cool. So you definitely want to make sure it's dry. I'm not going to hit this with the heat tool because, again, the photo paper dries much better. I just want to keep my table a slight bit clean if I can help it. 
go around the edge. Okay, so what you would do, once you get this all dry, you decide you wanna trim it up. I almost don't think I can, can trim this one. I think I'm gonna have to use this as a whole sheet. But we'll use, we'll use this one here. So you could use this as a background. You could cut shapes out of this as a background. This one doesn't look good at all. So it might look a little better once it dries a little bit. And it does kind of have these cool, it almost looks like these copper accents. So this is kind of neat. But it definitely didn't hold up as well. If you can see, this is pretty straight still as the photo paper. So I would highly recommend trying this with some photo paper if you have any. So photo, 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 and this is glossy. So let me see, what did I have handy here that I thought we could try? Because I really wasn't quite decided on what kind of a sentiment to use. Yeah, Star Wars for sure. I love that one. That table is very special. Absolutely. My grandfather uh, made a lot of stuff out of um, old church benches because the, the church where he worked, um, they tore down the basement church. So they had all these benches. So we have so many things. But yes, the fact that he made it for me was amazing. And I love this table. It's beautiful. So, so beautiful. All right. So... Let's see, I have handy, and I don't know if this is really gonna go with this theme, but I have the Rooted in Nature bundle out because I was actually gonna decorate those little boxes with that. And this would be cool, even if you did like a thinking of you card onto this, it'd be really pretty. You know what we should try on this? Let's try this and see if it works. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. We could completely ruin it, but let's try doing thinking of you on this with black embossing powder. And then we'll add this to a card and we'll see what it looks like. And if it doesn't work out, then you just don't do it. You could just say, nope, don't do that because it turned out terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these on the side. Set this one. This one's going to be saved for Star Wars. So I got to figure out something to do with this. But this one, what we're going to do is we're going to get our embossing buddy. And <laughs> just woke up and here you are. Isn't that funny? Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, it probably be better if this is drier. So this is pretty dry because it's not picking, eh, it's picking up a little bit of this. That's okay. So you want to make sure this is dry before you go through with too much. Just going to tap a little bit with your embossing buddy. And then let me grab, I'm going to just wipe this off because I had a little bit of a puff cloud there. So I'm going to use Versamark ink. And I have my Thinking of You from Rooted in Nature. We'll see how this turns out. Hopefully it'll turn out well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down here in the lower corner. I'm going to put it this way. That way it kind of blends a little bit of the white, but also this, this stuff up top is pretty. So I don't really want to cover it up. So I'm going to grab again another coffee filter. If you prefer to have the ones that are actually in shape, you could use those too. But you, they never really wear out, so you can use them over and over. I do have my black embossing powder. And let's get started. So we have that. Have our Versamark. Ink this up. Versamark, if you haven't ever used it, is a really sticky ink. It takes a long time to dry, so it's awesome for heat embossing. All right, so I'll put this over here. Let me see. Straight down like that. Give a little press. Okay. Now the cool part about this is because of the way this background is, we're not going to really see how fantastic it looks. I'm thinking positive until after we've sprinkled. So we're going to sprinkle our powder on. That's our black heat embossing powder. That looks kind of cool. Flick it off. Just go over just one more time just to make sure I got everything. Okay. So then before I make a mess, it looks like a toner exploded. I'm going to just put my powder right back in. Oops, look at that. Did not pour correctly. Make sure you pour correctly or have a piece of paper you can pick up. All right, so I do save these. I use them over and over again. You can use them for the same color if you want to. You don't have to. It's kind of up to you. I've only ever had like very rare occasion where something has cross-contaminated. 
And then I'm going to turn on my heat tool, especially because this is the photo paper. You really want to make sure you let your heat tool heat up before you hit it, okay? Base card is made with brusho, Diana. It's really neat. It will be ready for replay, so as soon as we're done. All right, so this is hot, so I'm going to just hit this. I'm going to start from underneath just to get the back. And I'm going to hit it from the top just to get it to melt. Ooh, look at that. Oh, well, there you go. It's cracking, so be careful heating this. Mm. So that might not be a good idea. Let's see what this looks like. I certainly don't want it to burst in the flames. Yeah, it's popping. It's popping the, uh, <laughs> the finish. So what it's doing, <laughs> we'll talk about two techniques in one. Do you guys remember back a while ago when Tammy did the um, clear embossing over the the paper and it cracked and she put it in the freezer and it cracked and cracked well this if you can see that just cracked the finish on this so you don't want to heat emboss it unless you want it cracked but again I'm not sure if it will burst into flames I didn't even think of that <laughs> taking it into effect it looks cool but I'm not sure if it's safe however it did almost fully emboss and it's all melted is what I'm meaning to say but it definitely cracked the paper so yes this is like cracked glass 2.0 <laughs> what not to do if you want cracked glass so keep that in mind and again this is also very warm because of the finish on the photo paper so as cool as this may be might want to do this with um, memento ink maybe instead but since we already did it and it is a little warm, but it's drying off. Since we already did it, we're going to use it because I would hate to waste it because it does look pretty cool. And what we'll do is we're going to just put down some heavy adhesive on this. So since we did it on black with the black embossing, I'm going to put it on a black card because I think it'll look very striking against it. So let me grab my trimmer. I'm not sure if this one is to size or not. We're going to just use a half a sheet of cardstock. So we want four and a quarter. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit long. Four and a quarter by 11. And we're going to score it at five and a half. Remember, you're also going to want to have something on the inside for your white base. So we'll grab a sheet. Real quick, we'll grab a sheet of Whisper White. And I'm going to cut that at four by five and a quarter. That will be for our inside panel. And I'm going to say, I want to say we will put this down. Definitely want to put this down with some good adhesive. So just to be able to show you how to use that, I'm going to show you that. Oh, look, end of the roll for the tear and tape. Took a long time. So I'm going to take my tear and tape and put this down that way it'll stay really really flat but it's kind of a, it's a neat card because you have a lot of uh, dimension to it even though it's flat so that's pretty cool put one here put a little piece a little bit in the middle because we want to make sure it stays down you could probably also use the uh, Tombow liquid glue but I don't want to make you guys wait that long, so I'm just going to put some tear and tape. Put one more piece here. Okay, so the trick to this is, if you're going to use this tool here, flip it around. Oh, that's a smart idea. Yeah, I didn't put all of my labels on. I have been putting more of them on because they are coming out with those new labels, I believe, that they're testing. So, flat, and all you do is you stick it under. Look how easy that is just like that so simple stick it right in the middle so this is the take your pick tool how cool is this okay so I'm just gonna peel all these off way simpler than even if you you don't have nails and you still can't get it to come off it comes off so easy and then all you have to do if you want is just um if you notice it gets any stickies just Pull it off with a little bit of alcohol we'll clean it off kind of the same if you clean your scissors so we're going to pick this up turn it around 
put this on here just like that. Kind of is neat though with the crackled paper. I like it. Wasn't something I expected. And this has a little bit of, whoops, a little bit of uh, embossing buddy on it. So I'm going to just fold this. You could also add a little bit of, um, if you wanted to, the metallic thread. The silver metallic thread would be really pretty. And then we'll put something on the inside here, thinking of you. Put a little leaf at the bottom. And words are never enough. And you could, there's lots of leaves in this. You could use this little leaf here. Actually, I think I'm going to use that one because it's a little bit more delicate. Got lots of stuff with this stamp set. This also has a coordinating die set as well. So let me grab this. And just to kind of keep it with the same color, I'm going to go with... I'm going to add in this in uh, Pacific Point. So I'm going to take my leaf and I'm going to stamp it off once. Yeah. So I'm going to stamp it off. Two. And then I'm going to add one in Granny Apple Green. Just to bring a little green in. Clean this off. My chamois. But I'm going to do it off once that way it's... That's pretty though. That way the colors kind of match. Kind of mirrors back to what the other one does. And I'm going to add my sentiment in Memento. Again, if you want it straight, make sure you put your backing on there. Probably be a good idea, but I'm going to wing it for now because my battery is going to be dying and I don't want to disappoint you guys with not finishing this. So make sure if you aren't already that you are subscribed to me at reachthestamper.com. I will post the, all of this with the measurements and the instructions to my blog later on today. I never put these down because that way if you mess it up, you can flip it over. I'm just going to put this down with some snail. And just like that, we're done. Beautiful little card. Thinking of you. Oops. Words are never enough. Lovely card. So I will put this onto the blog later. I appreciate all of you tuning in and watching. Again, I apologize I was late back to school. Next week we should be fine because he'll be in school, so I won't have to worry about running back and forth. And um, again, if you don't have a catalog, send me an email. I'll be happy to send you one. Make sure you send your full mailing address with it. And you can follow along here on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube at reachthestamper.com. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at reachthestamper.gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon.